Welcome back to Fox and Friends First. Lawmakers sifting through more than 200 pages of transcripts from former FBI Director James Comey's marathon testimony. So, what did we learn? Joining me now to break it all down is the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know you were up Good late morning. last night, going to be a very busy day again today, uh, so we appreciate your time. Uh, let's get Good right morning. to it, though. Uh, some of the main takeaways, one of them, obviously, was that uh, James Comey didn't appear to uh, remember a lot or he didn't know a lot to begin with. I don't know which it is, but he said, I don't know at least 156 times amongst a lot of other variations of that. So what's your take away from that? Well, it wouldn't be so bad if he professed ignorance on minor topics, but he professed ignorance on a lot of key aspects of the FISA, uh, the details about, for instance, uh, who funded it about uh, because he signed off on at least one of the FISA warrants that targeted Carter Page and the Trump team mm -hmm. and he professed not to know much about the origins beyond what he read in the newspapers later and you know that's concerning given that uh, a, a review of the partial FISA applications that have been released in Judicial Watch's lawsuits show uh, that the courts were misled that they were told that this uh, FISA uh, the dossier for instance had um, uh, origins in a political opposition to President Trump, but wasn't told, the court wasn't told, the Clinton campaign was behind mm -hmm. it. And let's go to this next point that, that came out in these pages and pages of testimony, that, that the anti-Trump dossier was, in fact, unverified. Yeah, he confirmed what we already knew, that it was minimally corroborated. Remember, Devin Nunes concluded that in his uh, report earlier this year, and he was excoriated by the left for saying that, but it's true. It was minimally corroborated when they first applied to the courts and when it was renewed. And as best I know, it still is minimally corroborated. And remember, the dossier was used by, uh, created with the help of Russia Intel, according to Fusion, G Fusion GPS. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a smear operation by the Russians through the Clinton camp with the willing help of the FBI and, frankly, now the Mueller operation. And that's specifically important, the, the issue of verification, because uh, intel sources say that presenting a single unverified fact, that throws into account this whole Woods procedure, which needs to be followed in order for this FISA uh, to be granted. You know, it's one thing to say, hey, look, we like this source, but if they can't find a substantiation for what the source is telling them and they're not telling the court that, that's a real problem. Okay, so let's move to the next one. The four Americans that were apparently under investigation but not President Trump. Yeah, so that is important. Those were all people associated with the Clinton campaign, the, uh, excuse me, the Trump campaign. They include uh, Carter Page, Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, and the fourth names escaping me. Uh, but uh, tr <laughs> James Comey tried to pretend just because we're targeting four people on the Trump campaign doesn't mean we're tar targeting the Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. Who's he kidding? And of course, Carter Page was spied upon later in the year. Yeah, so let's move to the fourth one. Uh, he defended the FBI agent, Peter Strzok. He said there was no indication of bias. You just said, you know, who are you kidding? You could probably say that here too. Uh, yeah, well, he said that if he was on the, th this is what's really frustrating, because he said if he knew what the texts were at the time, he would have pulled them off the Clinton and the Russia case. Uh, but then later, he said it was a conspiracy theory uh, that struck was uh, pro-Clinton uh, pro and anti-Trump. So he wants to have it both ways. And it shows you that... Uh, Mr. Comey may have some struck problems, too, given his biases. But he's not friends with Robert Mueller. He pointed that out. He said he doesn't have his personal cell phone number, said he hasn't been over to his house, <laughs> said he's not friends with Robert Mueller. What do you think about that? You know, there was a Washington Post story uh, not too long ago talking about them being brothers in arms. They're close professionally, and it doesn't matter in the sense that uh, Comey and Mueller had a professional relationship and Mr. Comey specifically uh, leaked information to get a special counsel going, mm -hmm. and now Mueller is using Comey as his witness. And people are concerned about the conflicts yeah. legitimately since they had this long and close working relationship. And Tom, you're testifying before Congress on December 13th, correct? 
Uh, yes, this Thursday uh, yeah. on, on the Clinton Foundation issue. Uh, this is the hearing that had been put off right. uh, a few weeks, and we'll see what happens. But uh, we broke open the Clinton Foundation pay-to-play right. scandal.